Hi, y'all. Sasri Kal. This is Tak from BIPOC Executive Search getting at you today for the Wellness and Work Podcast, a podcast where I share stories and tips to keep you healthy, happy, and motivated for your day job. So today's topic is three ways to set work boundaries when working from home. This is definitely a topic that's top of mind for me as I record this. We are continuing to exist within the COVID-19 pandemic with different waves coming and going. Lots of people who used to work in offices were now working from home. And so the boundaries and space between our personal lives, our work lives is really, you know, getting a little bit blurry. So I thought this was a great topic to start off on in terms of how do we create that harmony and balance keeping our own selves healthy and well, while also showing up in a good way to our work, to our clients, to our team members, to all of the amazing people that we get to share space with in our paid work responsibilities. So I will start off with a story. This is how I will typically start our podcast as a story from my own life. And I can say that I grew up in a home where my parents were separated. I grew up mostly with my mom who is a single mom. And despite, you know, all the demands that she had, working multiple jobs, working night shifts, she always seemed to show up for us, whether that was taking us to our dance classes or taking us to school field trips. It was amazing. Whereas my dad, who was a small business owner at the time, running his own business, totally understand the demands of that. But kid you not, y'all, he would sometimes be like two hours late to any events, to picking us up from school. And it really just shaped my childhood to the point where now if I do anything with him, I tell him that whatever it is we're doing starts at least an hour before it actually does, <laughs> whether that's us catching a flight or going to dinner for a dinner reservation. I always tell him the wrong time because I was so traumatized from him being late all the time. And I attribute it to him not, you know, setting those boundaries between work and life. Um, he was working from home and yet still, you know, unable to make it to a lot of our um, important events. Um, so, you know, bless him. He was doing his best. He always provided for us. However, I do think that it's really important to have that harmony and balance, whether you have kids or whether you just live by yourself or with a partner so that you can continue to show up to our workplaces, to your workplaces in a way that respects other people's time, respects your own time, because I feel that the way that we show up for one thing is the way that we show up for everything. So with respect to setting those work boundaries, how do we go about doing that, especially when we're all potentially working from home? So the first thing is to ditch the to-do list and instead to use a time management or task management schedule. So rather than waking up, you know, writing down a list of all the things we have to do in that day and then just going at it, I actually recommend time blocking. So putting in an actual calendar invite to yourself at that time and exactly what you're planning to achieve in that time. So whether for me, that would be, you know, writing out interview questions for a particular search, whether that's, of course, meeting with candidates and doing prep calls, whether that's sending emails, rather than having it on a list without a time associated with it, actually booking it into our calendar so that our nine to five, when we look at our calendar, everything's actually all blocked out and we just follow that flow and follow the timeline. And you can book that ahead. So rather than, you know, just doing it for the day, you could actually time block and create that time management schedule for the whole week. And then all you have to do is show up, see what, what task am I working on right now, get it done within that time. 
because often the time we allot for the task is how long it'll take to do it. So whether that's three hours or half an hour, our mind and body's spirit will work to be able to complete it within that time. So that's number one, ditch the to-do list and use a task management schedule instead. Number two is to schedule in a morning routine until 9 a.m. So whatever it is you like to do for yourself, it's so important to serve ourselves first because if you're listening to this podcast, I know that you are, you know, a change maker, you are fired up, you're living in excellence, you are so excited about, you know, your work, your life, your passion. So you're always going to have a lineup of, you know, five to 10 to 15 to 100 to thousands of people waiting to be served by you. And we always want to make sure that, you know, we're serving ourselves first in the morning, doing what fills up our cup so that we can best serve others. We cannot serve people if we are feeling drained, if we're feeling burnt out, if we don't have that time for ourselves. So what I like to do is schedule in my morning routine and make sure it takes me until 9 a.m. to do that so that when 9 a.m. rolls around, I've done all this amazing work on myself, whether that's, you know, doing my workout, having my coffee in silence or while listening to a podcast, going for a walk, doing any healing and meditation work that I like to do, having breakfast. So really filling up that time so we're not tempted to, you know, start work at 7.30 or start work at 8.30 as soon as we wake up, get our shower and roll into, you know, our day to really build out that morning routine and do what really fills you up, what you like to do. Your morning routine doesn't have to look like anybody else's as long as it makes you feel you know, joyful and happy and allows you to get maybe some non-screen time in there as well. So that would be tip number two is to schedule in a morning routine that takes you until 9 a.m. to do or, you know, till 8.45 so you have a bit of transition time. And then number three is to schedule an after work routine that starts at five. So just like we use a time management schedule for our work, for our paid work, we can do so for our after work hours. So for me, right at five o'clock, I, you know, shut down my computer, say thank you, all of that good stuff. And then I either start to prep dinner or I just chill and, you know, stare out the window. Um, I live close to a university, so I like to see, you know, people walking by after their days and just starting to wind down myself. And then my partner and I typically will go for a dog walk right after, then we'll make dinner. Then we have, you know, our cleanup time, we'll have our reading time, and then we'll watch an episode of the show together. And that's our routine. And we do that every day. Uh, we know that it starts at five o'clock so that we're not tempted to, you know, work until late. And again, do things that fill you up, that bring you joy. I absolutely love going to this one forest park near my house with my dog after work. And it's something that I get to look forward to at the end of the day. So it's something that actually makes me finish my work on time so that I can go and do it as opposed to, you know, saying we're going to do something that we don't want to do. Um, I'm very introverted. So for instance, if I made plans with my friends um, every single day, I'd probably, you know, make up an excuse and say, I have to work late. I can't go out because I just find it a bit draining to do that. So I like to do solo things or things with my partner uh, in the evenings, things that I really, really look forward to. So just to recap, three ways to set work boundaries when you're working from home. First way is to ditch the to-do list and instead to use a time management schedule. So blocking out time for each of our tasks and getting it done during that time. And if we don't, then you can add it in later in the week or the following week. The second one is to schedule a morning routine that you love, that fills you up, that makes you feel like so good and ready to serve and scheduling it until nine. That doesn't necessarily mean we have to wake up super, super early. You know, I um, wake up probably around seven o'clock. I try to not set an alarm because I like waking up naturally and that's 
usually my natural wake up time. So definitely not saying that we need to wake up at 5 a.m. and have this elaborate morning routine, even if it's 10, 15 minutes. It's something that gives you joy and, and fills you up before your day. And then number three is to schedule an after work routine that starts at five so that you just like you honor your work time, your work boundaries um, and meetings and those sorts of things. It's a meeting with yourself, uh, with your loved ones, anybody, your pets that helps you to, you know, close down at that time and and enjoy your evening and rest and relaxation because you all deserve it so, so much. So thanks so much for listening. I'll leave it there for now. Talk to you soon. Bye.